baptism is. Baptism is done for the forgiveness of sins, Acts 2.38. Baptism is done to save us, 1 Peter 3.21, Acts 2.40, Mark 16.16. Baptism is done to wash away our sins, Acts 22.16. Baptism is done to be reborn to new life, John 3.5, Romans 6, 3 through 6. Baptism is done to clothe ourselves with Christ, Galatians 3, 26 and 27. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. for being sensitive and letting God set the stage to speak into our spirits. And it, 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 it's important that, that if we want God to give to us, that we give to God. That, that, that's the principle of sowing and reaping. And, and preaching is not for God's benefit, it's for our benefit. We are not preaching God's word back to Him. We are preaching God's word into us. Praise is what we do for God. And then preaching is what God does for us. And I don't want to come to church ever and expect God to give me what I need without me first being willing to give God what he desires. It's beautiful when the people of God can lift up holy hands without wrath, without doubting, and bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. And uh, the, the, the anointing is here, the stage has been set. Uh, it, it never ceases to amaze me how God works and how nothing is by chance. And uh, I am here on purpose tonight. I'm honored to be here. I'm just going to go to work if that'd be all right with you. Man, would you just stretch your hands towards me one more time? I'm going to stretch my hands towards you. God, you put this word on my heart. I didn't come up with this on my own. But God, you let this be birthed in me in a prayer meeting. And even today as I was praying in the Holy Ghost, you reassured me that this word was for this church on this night. And everything in this service has pointed to this pivotal moment. Speak to your people tonight, God. Let the anointing continue to flow. And we will be so careful to give you every bit of the praise. Why don't somebody go ahead and give him a hand clap in advance right now. Oh, why don't you lift your voice and shout at him with a voice of triumph. Come on, why do we really do it one time as unto the Lord? Hey! Hey! Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated here in the presence of the Lord tonight. If God would help me, I want to just talk to you out of the word of the Lord and out of my heart what I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God has put in my spirit, and if, if, if you would allow me, and if you would help me, I want to talk to you for just a little bit from this very simple subject, and that is giants. Everybody say giants. I want to talk to you about giants, and I want to talk to you about giant killers. Giants and giant killers. It's important that, that you understand that from the beginning there has always been those things that are larger than life, bigger than man, too much for humanity to overcome, standing between God's people and what God has promised his people. It's important that you understand that because every one of us have giants in our lives. Every one of us 
have those situations that are seemingly impossible and those circumstances uh, that are so much larger than we are and so much bigger than our ability to conquer and overcome those those situations, those things that have an innate ability to bring about confusion and intimidation and paralyze us and freeze us that we would stand stagnant rather than pursue the promises of God in our lives. Giants, they they didn't just jump up in New Bethel. They didn't just jump up in your life, but they have been and will always be. It, it, it's important you understand that. It, it, you, you can very quickly Quickly, if you're not careful, so minimize giants that you just go to the first book of Samuel, the 17th chapter, and 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 glamorize a, a, a Sunday school lesson that you learned as a child without understanding that giants. Everybody shout giants. Uh, Giants have always stood between the people of God and the promises of God. They, they, they are that which represents the wickedness, the perverseness, the, 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 the thing that intimidates, that which tries to paralyze us in thinking that we have been the overcome rather than the over. I, I, I'm talking about giants. They, they come in all shapes and forms and sizes. For, for some, they, they stand tall in the name of depression for some it's fear others it's 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 in finances and others uh, it's in physical things and for yet some it's the giants uh, they didn't just come about but the bible says if you go and i, I know it's tuesday night and I, I i could just teach but i feel a little bit like preaching tonight i'm gonna tell you i feel an anointing in this house i i feel more liberty tonight than i felt in a long time because there are giants and i don't want to get too far ahead but for every giant, God's willing to raise up a giant killer. You, 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 you go back to the book of beginnings and, and, and you, you see this season and time how that the crown of God's creation, mankind, they, they, they are being overcome with evil, with wickedness, with perversion. They, they, they are so disconnected from God and the promises of God that their thoughts are evil only and, and their communication is corrupt and, 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 and you get to read about it and the Bible says, and there were giants in the land. They, they, they were obstacles that were seemingly so large that man uh, would be destroyed uh, rather than reconnected. Uh, but let me tell you what shortly follows uh, in Genesis chapter 6 when the Bible talks about the evilness and God's spirit not always striving uh, and there were giants in the land. Uh, it didn't stop there but the Bible says but Noah found grace uh, in the eyes uh, of the Lord. Uh, I'm going to tell you uh, you can measure a giant uh, but you can't measure measure God's grace. It's bigger than any obstacle. It's larger than anything in your life. God's grace is bigger than depression. God's grace don't need a pill. It's able to overcome fear. God's grace is bigger than the economy. God's grace is bigger than your bankrupt business. God's grace is bigger than your falling apart marriage. Yes, there are giants. But there is God's grace. Giants. Oh, you like pretty and put together. But everybody's got them. <laughs> you, 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 you see, you, you, you see this over and over. How giants would catch the attention of God's people. Rather than promises being pursued. I, I, I don't want to take a lot of time here because I need to get somewhere, but you, you see this in Numbers, the 13th chapter. Here, God, God, God has delivered his people from 400 years of oppression. God has 
parted the seas with the blowing of the wind. God has allowed bitter water to become sweet. God has fed his people in a time of transition uh, from deliverance out of into deliverance into. And God has told Moses, you tell the people, I'm bigger than just a get you out God. I, I'm a get you in kind of God. I'm getting you out of Egypt, but I'm getting you into a large land, a big land. I, I don't know why, but there's some people uh, you need to understand. God's bigger than what used to have you bound. God's bigger than just being big enough to deliver you from what he brought you out of. Uh, If God can get you out of sin, uh, God can get you into his promise. And, 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 And so, so they're camped at the Jordan and, 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 and we see we see the first board put together and we see the trouble that this board would cause God told the man I'm taking you in but somewhere the man decides to get 12 and have them search out the land and bring back what they think rather than what God said. Do you know that the first board called Israel to wonder? And that's still what causes churches tonight to wonder. God does not run his church uh, with men from the church. Uh, God uh, takes people out of Egypt through the wilderness uh, and into the promise uh, with a man, uh, not a group of men. That's not in my notes. Don't cost you anything, but it's good Bible preaching. And, And so Moses decides to get the opinion of 12. And he says, I want you to go in and I want you to come back and I want you to tell us what's in the land. And the Bible says that in their searching out and, and, and they have the scriptures, but I'm just going to hurry through this tonight. You, you go read it for yourself. I'm in Numbers, the 13th chapter, and I'm going to end in Numbers, the 14th chapter, the first verse. And so, so here they send them out. And they come, it's a time of harvest, uh, and they come to some grapes. And this cluster of grapes is so long that it takes two men putting it up on a staff to begin to carry it out. The 12 get back to Moses and the rest of the camp. And they say, you know what? It, it, it was a good land. They, they do have houses that we didn't build. They, they built them. Uh, they, you, you, you can see these grapes. They, they do have vineyards that we can partake of that, that we didn't plant. And, 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 and they, they had wells that we drank deep from and, 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 and we didn't dig them. But there are giants in the land. They are the sons of Anak. They're giants that have come from giants. They're, they're generational giants. They, 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 they kept New Bethel from seeing the promises in the 70s and then they rose up and kept New Bethel from seeing the promise come to pass in the 80s and then they showed back up in the 90s and then they popped up the head in the 2000s and now in 2019 uh, every time we get some momentum uh, they're giants uh, from the giants uh, have you ever stopped to connect the dots and realize uh, it's the same cycle uh, it's the same spirits uh, it's the same attitudes uh, it's and it, 
And if you ever defeat it once, you have it defeated for a lifetime because it's science that a And Israel does what we get guilty of doing. They start measuring giants and quit weighing grapes. They, they start measuring what's before them. And they forget about the weight of the blessings that's upon them. See, that's what we'll still do. See, I, I've been preaching around here long enough. I thank God for all the faces uh, that are still here from the first time that I walked in the doors of New Bethel. Uh, but I see a lot of new faces uh, that used to not be here. Uh, and if you're not careful, uh, you'll quit measuring and weighing the fruit uh, and you'll get back to looking at the giant. Uh, I've come to tell you, if it can be this full on a Tuesday night in 2019, uh, God can fill up that balcony uh, in 2020. Uh, but you got to keep weighing grapes. Uh, you got to keep weighing grapes. Uh, you can't start measuring science. Uh, you got to weigh grapes. You can run, you can clap, you can shout, but I'm going to preach. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. I'm going to tell some of you pillar saints, huh? you let the enemy cause you to focus on spilt milk that will never be put back in the glass. Huh? And in your shadow, sunsetting years, huh? keep you bound up when what's happening tonight is just what you stayed faithful for. Huh? Just what you kept praying about. Huh? Just what you kept hanging on to see. Huh? And when it happens, huh? if you're not careful, huh? you'll keep measuring science. And see, see, when you start, when you start measuring grapes, when you start measuring giants instead of weighing grapes, it'll bring a spirit of weeping upon you rather than a spirit of rejoicing. And the Bible says they, they quit weighing grapes and they started measuring giants. And the people wept all night long. They were weeping over something that they started measuring that was never their fight to begin with. Instead of rejoicing over the blessings that God had already given them the inheritance and earnest of. I wonder what would happen. It's just, hey, I, I, I know it probably happens right here all the time. It don't always happen like this in general. Sometimes people come to church and they'd rather pout than praise. They, they'd rather have a pity party than a prayer meeting because it makes our flesh feel better. But, but I wonder what would ever happen if just one time in one service huh, we would hang what we feel huh, and what we're facing at the door and we just walked in huh, and in unison huh, said look what the Lord has done huh. look look at the new people that God's given huh. look at the talent that God's raising up huh. look at the oh you can sit down. I'm just talking to you. You, 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 you. you see how that if you ever start weighing, measuring giants rather than weighing grapes, you will weep and then you will wonder. Because the sun, it's going to come up in the morning. And the problem with giant measurers, as opposed to great wares, weeping is supposed to endure for the night, but the joy, 
See, what he was saying is you lay down and close your eyes and, and be restless trying to find sleep. But, but if you'll just hang around till the sun comes up, I'll show you why you just need to keep shouting. And... But see, but see, when you're determined to weep in the day like you wept in the night, It makes you wonder in a wilderness. All because there were giants. But if you ever get the revelation that God doesn't just allow there to be giants, but God is always willing to raise up a giant killer. tell you, I, 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 just, I just know God put this on my heart for tonight. Here, here we, we, we will jump to one of your favorite story time lessons. The Bible says that, 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 that Goliath stood and he was defying the, the armies of Israel. And, 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 and you know the story, because of the giant... People become intimidated and paralyzed and in fear. And and we like to talk about David and how he was a giant killer. But we never take the time to study the characteristics that made him the most well-known giant slayer of them all. Because if you take time to study the characteristics, you'll realize uh, that it wasn't anything special about David. It was just a revelation about his God. And when you study the characteristics, you begin to realize uh, that wasn't just a David thing. Uh, That can be a me thing. Uh, That can be a my family. See, see, if, if you're going to be a giant killer, it don't start at Gilgal. Bible says that that God rejects Saul and he speaks to Samuel and he says get up boy don't cry another tear over what's been lost because I've got somebody else that I'm going to raise up and you begin to read in 1 Samuel how that Samuel goes to Jesse's house and they start bringing these brothers through and Samuel says uh uh-uh. uh Not him. Looks good, but we've already tried that looking good part. Standing larger and taller than everybody else, but we done messed up and put our faith in that once. Can I ask you something? Why would you get upset if something doesn't work or hasn't worked? If we don't keep anointing the same thing? Somewhere you got to pass the test. Samuel says that, that there's got to be somebody else because I know God sent me. <laughs> and Jesse says, well, there is one. And he's out there with the sheep. I'm going to tell you, if you want to be a giant killer, you can't spend your time hanging out and listening to goats. You got to spend your time connecting with sheep. Because to kill a giant takes faith. And gossip robs people of their faith. Talking about everything going on in the church costs people their faith. Criticizing everything going on that doesn't build your faith. That can, if you want to kill giants, huh? You got to be where God goes to anoint and raise up. And he don't go among the goats. He slips. And he grabs one that had learned to peacefully get along with sheep. And be protective of sheep. Not divisive of the sheep. 
Anybody can sow discord. It doesn't take discipline to sow discord. It doesn't take discipline to give people a piece of your mind. And, 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 and since I'm just being so bold, let me just remind some of you, you don't have enough mind to give away. You, you, you're struggling with what little bits you have. It, it don't take no discipline. It don't take no discipline to say, I don't like that. that that's the flesh. But it takes discipline. To say, you know what? That, 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 that's my brother. And even if that's true, we're not going to spread it. We're going to kill it. We're, we're, we're not going to fight fire with fire. We're going to fight fire with forgiveness. We, we, we're not going to fight slaps with slaps. Uh, we're going to fight slaps uh, with praying for them that despitefully use us. Uh, asking God to bless. Uh, the... Because one day, it's not going to be a brother. Uh, it's going to be a giant. Uh, and it's going to take an anointing. Uh... And, and so you see, and I'm hurrying, you, 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 you sit down and I'm, I, I really am trying to, 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 to move along. But, but, but there's something interesting here that for, for, for 38 years, Brother Beard, I, I never even recognized. And that is that David didn't get anointed to be king. He just got anointed. I've preached that what kept David doing right is he knew that one day he was going to sit on a throne until I got to studying it. And I begin to realize, Sister Robinson, that Samuel never told David he was anointing him to be king. He just took out the oil, poured it on his head, and the Bible said from that day forward, the spirit of the Lord was with David. You know what New Bethel needs? Not people that think that God's called them to fill a position, but people that just gets anointed. Because see, a gift, an anointing will make room for itself. Because a lion will come up when nobody's looking. Uh, but you've got the spirit of the Lord. Uh, and you'll take care of the lion. Uh, a bear will come up when there ain't no platform to... See, see, see it, it was never a question. In David's mind, what was going to happen with the giant? Because before he was in the midst of of the people before there was a stage for him to stand on before there was a microphone for him to hold things were coming against him that was bigger than him but every time something bigger than him come his way that anointing that was poured upon him out would get a fret People say it took a lot of faith for David. That no, no, no. He he had done face the lion, and he had done face the bear, and he told Saul, "This uncircumcised Philistine ain't no more bigger than me, and too tough for me than what that lion was." Hey. I feel like preaching to a business owner right now. I know. I know you've got some big obstacles. And I'm telling you what I feel in the Holy Ghost. There's a business owner even here tonight. You've thought about getting out of the business and just going to work for somebody in the same kind of business. Uh, because the giant's too big. Can I tell you uh, that the line of alcoholism uh, was just as too big. But the Spirit delivered you. The spirit of fear and depression uh, 
was just as big as the giant standing in your finances. But the Spirit of the Lord come over you. I've come to tell you, when you get this anointing, it ain't for a singular purpose. It's to destroy every yoke of bondage. You're not going. You're not going. You're not going to be a giant killer till you learn to hang out with sheep and get anointed. And then, 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 you, you, you're not ever going to kill giants until it, it, it just. It was such confirmation as Brother Robinson was exhorting before he started singing. This means war. But you're 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 not going. You're not going to kill giants. Until you learn to only confront the real enemy. David comes slipping up. His daddy had sent him. He didn't show up on his own accord. He, he didn't know there was a giant down there to find. But there's something about hanging out with sheep and having an anointing that has a way of making you sensitive to step into situations that you didn't even know anything about, but you've got what it takes to overcome. That, 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 that's why you don't need to wait till there's trouble to slip by here and make this the house of prayer. And he, he comes slipping in. And he sees this giant standing on what had been promised to him. And he says, uh, what, 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 what's, that, what's, what's everybody hiding for? See, if you're not careful, you, you'll get mixed up in your mind and think that you've got to be a preacher to, defeat, to defeat the giant. You know what Moses told him? I would that you all were priests. Because it was meant for us to be a people of promise. In C- case you think I'm mischaracterizing that, you just need to read the New Testament. He said, you are a royal. You are a chosen you are a pe- that means a rare, valuable, movable treasure. You, you, you go read it. A lot of people get the rare and valuable. They never take the time to study it out that it means movable. It, it, it means God called me and I can fight right here at New Bethel. And because I'm anointed, I, I can go back on Sunday morning and I can whip the giant and just... Anointing is not stationary. You either have it and you got all you need or you don't have it and not. Let me tell you, you don't have to be able to sing a solo to whip giants. You don't have to be able to write big checks to whip giants. You don't even have to be young enough that you can still make two apps around the church uh, if you just remember how to shake yourself, Samson. Uh, y'all may not be enjoying listening, but I'm enjoying talking. Let me just tell you that. See, you, you, you think all this shaking business is... Oh, help me, Jesus. You, you, you think it's just a Pastor Robinson thing or just trying to be North... No, 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 no. See, Samson, you'll do things that separate you from the Spirit. But when the Philistines would come, Samson would what? He would what? He would what? He would what? See, you may not can run three laps, but sitting right there on that padded pew... 
Because baby, if you've ever had it, it doesn't take a whole lot of time to get it back. I wish some 70 year old saint would just pitch a Holy Ghost shake fear right now. Cause I'm telling you, I feel dying and killing an awning in this house. I, It's out there. See, see, I, I, I'm going somewhere. You, you never kill a giant till you stay focused on the real enemy. And he gets out there. And Eliab, see, see, if you're not careful, you'll read over this and forget that this is in public, not private. And Eliab looks at him and says, "What are you doing down here?" got a tambourine because you're trying to be pastor's pet. What? What? And who? See, people who hang out with goats, they despise people who really hang out with sheep. You, you tell me how much you're for what's going on in your church, but I'm just looking who you hang out with and tell you the truth. See, goat herders hate shepherds. <laughs> Who, with such disdain, did you leave them few sheep with? And you know what? I did this because I'm just going to tell you I'm preaching what I'm living right now. But I'm living what I'm preaching and I'm watching God do it just like in this story. David, Brother Robinson, could have stepped up and said, Eliab, you're just mad because Samuel anointed me and passed over you. Here Eliab was mocking him in front of the brethren. And David had the facts He could have put him in his place in front of the brethren. You're just still upset because you couldn't sit down till I got to the house. But the Bible says that here Eliab is mocking him in front of the people and running him down and doing everything he can to destroy his reputation. And David answers him not a word, the Bible says. And he turned to another. And he didn't say anything about Eliab. He said, is there not a cause? You you may not like that God's using me, but is there not a need? See, you know what David understood? I can sit here and have a knockdown drag out with Eliab and make people take sides. Or I go kill that giant. Because it's not if I'm gonna kill him. It's just I'm waiting for the time to run up to him. And when I hold up his head, do you think anybody's gonna remember what Eliab said? Do you think one person uh, in that assembly, Brother Robinson, uh, remembered the lies that the gossipers were spreading uh, when David took the head uh, of Goliath uh, and said, this just wasn't for me. Uh, This was for everybody. Uh, And the Bible said at once, uh, all the men uh, began to run after David. Uh, You know what I've come to tell somebody? uh, Don't fight Eliab. Uh, He's your brother. Uh, Keep fighting the child. But see, it's this last little revelation. And I know this is simple, but Brother Robinson will be preaching Sunday morning and you'll get back to the good stuff. But it's this last little nugget that you have to have an understanding of if you're going to focus on the giant and ignore Eliab. David had the revelation 
The giants cannot kill. They can only reveal. See, see, I said this when I was here last time, but, but, but you start seeing people get blessed and you start seeing people prosper. And, and if you're not careful, you'll say, look what money did to them. No, money revealed them. I, I said it like this. It's easy to be faithful to church when you, the van's having to pick you up. And the only way you get to get out of the house is... And it ain't that you wanted to quit watching TV. The TV broke and you couldn't afford another one. It's easy to be faithful. And you dressed holy because you couldn't buy your own clothes. You was wearing something that the... See, if you ever connect the dots, generosity is connected with separation. That's why the people who are most generous usually... You, 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 you find a lady that's generous and she's giving away clothes to new converts, you ain't got to worry about them being too tight, too short, too low. And see, it's easy to dress holy when you can't buy your own clothes. And you're just happy to get something new. You ain't worried about how much flesh you're showing off. So, so money isn't what kills people. It just simply re- And see, I know you thought that God raised up David to kill Goliath. The Sunday school building's next door. That's what you learn in Sunday school. God didn't raise up David to kill Goliath. God raised up Goliath to reveal David. You, you, we, we ain't, we need to put them one scripture up there. Put that last scripture up there. And the king said, inquire. Can, can you put that 55th verse up there? David goes forth against the Philistine. Now I know I could have talked about only using armor that you've proved and all that, but you, you're mature. You know all that. I'm going to talk to you about how the giants are not here to kill you, they're here to reveal you. See, this giant is to reveal whether you got a get even attitude or a get over attitude. Because I'm going to tell you the true test of forgiveness is not when you don't have the power to go ahead and crush them out. The true test of forgiveness and being right with God is when you hold it all in your hand. And you start weighing what you could do against the grapes that God's wanting to give. And you said, what is getting a little bit of revenge? Why would that be worth me giving up these? See, see, David was anointed, but in obscurity. He had anointing to slay giants, but he was here worshiping on a Judea hillside. Saul didn't know him. As just, I just need just somebody just to come play softly. Just Sister Phillips, if she's in here, she can just play softly. God raised up Goliath. Not to destroy David, but to reveal to everybody the anointed man that he was. They see him running up to fight this, these Philistines after he has slayed this giant. And Saul leans over to Abner, who doesn't know it, but he's getting ready to inhabit to, to, to take possession of the I used to be in charge title. Because Saul turns to Ab- Abner and he says, uh, I didn't even know we had anybody like that in our church. Yeah. 
Don't you just think it's some silly bus kid that we're just trying to promote our numbers with. That might be just the kid that slays the giant that causes you to chase your Philistine. I've done enough meddling. I'm just going to get back to this. He turns to Abner, the captain of the host. See, don't, don't think you've got to have a lineage this long to be used in the kingdom. Not only did they not know who David was, Brother Bruce, they didn't know who David's daddy was. They said, who? Who is the, who's the daddy of this, this boy? What you think about that, Eliab? You thought everybody knew you. <laughs> And the Bible says that Abner looks at him. Just play soft. Slow, sweet. See, music, God gave it to push back evil spirits that would try to keep you from getting a word. Saul would learn that too. Because giant killers, they're also praise and worshipers. That's, that's for next time. He turns to Abner. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. And he says, who's this boy? Who's, who's his daddy? Abner says, oh, if my life depended on it, I couldn't tell you. And the king says, quit worrying about leading an army. That boy's done took over. <laughs> you now go find out who he is. And overnight, because of a giant, God takes David from the backside of the wilderness. Until if I had time, you, could, you can go home and read it. It's a good read once you get this revelation. The Bible says that Saul, when he gets to David, he says, oh, Son, you're never to go back home <laughs> because giant slayers when they get revealed they pass the test and they can go from pastures to palaces and all of a sudden because of a giant David's standing in marble hallways looking at cathedral ceilings with servants and butlers holding their nose because <laughs> he still smells like sheep. But see, what they thought was a shepherd, they didn't realize was now the prince who was getting ready to be the king. Because the one that everybody thought was the prince was a young man by the name of Jonathan. And he comes and he stands next to David. And he starts taking off his coat. <laughs> Isn't it something that once you allow a giant to reveal you, God will put you in a place that you didn't think you was prepared for. And have somebody already standing there with just what you need to act the part. Saul tried to put some stuff on him. And he said, that ain't me. That ain't me. No, I, I don't believe I'm going to spend my days out here hiding. And, and See, that's what Saul's armor was doing. 
But, but have you ever, see, it's the, I love the simple little things in the Bible. Jonathan didn't have to call no tailor. They didn't have to hurry up before service and find somebody to hem the pants a little bit. They didn't need anybody to put an initial on his sleeve. God had used somebody else as a mannequin to just be standing at the right place at the right time so that once I'm revealed for what my purpose I'm going to tell you I feel the Holy Ghost you need to close your eyes and you need to listen to me right now there's some people you're getting ready to make contact if you let God help you with these giants you're getting ready to make contact with people that you don't know you're getting ready to reconnect with people that you hadn't seen in years and they're going to have just what you need to step into the next dimension of your calling. You need to quit focusing on what you don't have and you need to quit focusing on what Eliab's mouthing about out on the field uh, and you need to forget about how am I going to go from being a shepherd boy uh, tending sheep to I will tell you God's already got the mannequin uh, wearing what rightfully belongs to you uh, but until you let the giant reveal you uh, and until you quit trying to do it on your own uh, and say I'm not coming to you with intellect uh, I'm not coming to you with 30 years of business experience uh, I'm not coming to you with self help books uh, I'm not coming to you with prescription drugs uh, I'm coming to you uh, in the name of the Lord uh, I've come to tell somebody uh, you've got some giants uh, but you're a giant killer uh, and once you kill a giant you're going to move from a few sheep to a place in the palace. God, there's not a doubt in my mind that you're talking to somebody right now. They walked in here confused and you're not the author of confusion. They were confused because of a Goliath roaring in their life. And God, you set the stage because of our willingness to worship you and connect and declare that this means war, that we're not giving up our family and we're not giving up our finances and we're, we're not giving up our breakthrough. And you watch as people by faith, uh, they put their hope in you and they begin to worship and they begin to get loose in the Holy Ghost. Uh, and they didn't know what they was going to do. Uh, all they knew is that they were facing something bigger than them. Uh, and you started letting that anointing flow. Uh, and God, you'd already preordained it. Uh, you'd put a word on my heart. Uh, and they were shouting uh, in spite of the giant roaring. Uh, they didn't know what they was going to do. Uh, they didn't know where their help was going to come from. Uh, they were just shouting, uh, trying to survive. Uh, and you sent me to tell them. Uh, they weren't just shouting uh, to survive. Uh, they were shouting uh, because there's a giant killer on the inside uh, that you're trying to raise up uh, right now uh, that mother that was shouting uh, that grandmother that was getting loose uh, that dad and that teenager uh, that was giving you praise uh, I pray right now you let faith uh, begin to resonate in their heart uh, I pray right now that you give them the strength uh, to stand to their feet uh, to lift up their hands uh, and let that which is in them uh, begin to come forth uh, I'm telling somebody who was down here you're dancing. Uh, you're a giant killer. Uh, I'm preaching to somebody uh, who was you was getting loose uh, and you didn't really know if it was making a difference. Uh, and the enemy was telling you, don't do that. Uh, you're just making a fool of yourself. Uh, we don't have shout downs on Tuesday night. Uh, you just need to be calm uh, so we can get through Bible study. Uh, but you just kept getting loose. Uh, and God sent me to tell you, it wasn't for nothing. Uh, it was because there's a revelation. Uh, a reveal party uh, getting ready to take place uh, and just like you slew the lion uh, and just like you slew the bear uh, you're getting ready uh, to say the giant this may not be for everybody but I'm telling you there's a Goliath that's roaring and he's trying to intimidate somebody right now you need to talk back uh, come on come on I know you was raised not to back talk your mama, but you need to back talk this giant right now. You need to tell him, uh, you're right. Uh, 
I can't overcome you on my own. I can't overcome you by myself. But greater, but greater. Come on, those of you that's coming, I want you to join up with another warrior. Come on, come on, come on. I want you to join with the warrior. I'm going to tell you the enemy would like silence to consume us right now. The enemy would like distraction. The enemy, let me tell you some of you stepped out in the aisle. You can't get over what you've heard the critics say even today. I've come to tell you, you need to pray till you're praying in the Holy Ghost right now. I know you shook under it earlier. I know as the anointing flowed, you got loose about an hour ago. But now, you don't need to go by what you feel. You need to go by what the word of the Lord has spoke with assurance. And you need to declare, I shall overcome. Come on, I feel an anointing in this house right now. Come on, come on. I need some of you seasoned saints to lift your voice as loud as you can right now. Come on, I need some of you gray-headed men. Some of you mothers of Israel. I need you to shake yourself right now. Woo! Come on, I'm telling you, I feel increase in this church. I feel increase. I feel increase. Not just numerically. I feel increase spiritually. I feel increase in anointing. I feel increase in finances. I just feel increase in the house. But there's a giant that's saying you can't come get it. You can't have it. You need to talk back right now. And you need to say, I'm coming after it. I'm coming after it. I'm coming after it. Come on, that's it. Pray in the Holy Ghost. You're feeling it. Give yourself to it right now. You've done the shouting. You've done the clapping. You've done the shaking your head. Now you need to build yourself up on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Come on, I'm telling you, it's a soaking of the spirit right now. It's not just a little shallow shout. It's not a just three hand claps, two twirls. Let's go. I'm telling you, there's a giant killer reveal party going on tonight. The spirit world is standing with bated breath, wondering what you're going to do, Sister David. Wondering what you're going to do, Brother David. I'll tell you what you need to do. You need to just remember the grapes and not measure the giant. You've got all you need. If you've got the Holy Ghost, you've got that which you can do exceeding abundantly above all. Come on, the presence of the Lord is surrounding people right now. The angels of the Lord are setting up camp around people that fear him at this moment. I'm telling you, this giant is not for your destruction. This giant is not going to put you out of business. This giant is not going to run you out. This giant is going to be used to raise you up. I want you to take about three steps and I want you to join with somebody else and I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost and I want you to shake a little bit all at the same time come on I want you to just take somebody by the hand and I want you to start praying in the Holy Ghost and I want you to start shaking yourself at the same time I'm telling you there's an awning that wants to flow over you there's a resurrection of old gifts and callings that God's wanting to stir up come on I feel a shaking right now I feel a shaking right now. I'm going to tell you, there's some husbands you're feeling to pray with your wife right now. You need to do it. You need to obey the Lord. There's some giants 
there's some giants uh, there's some giants uh, it's got you on edge uh, it's got you on the ner- verge of a nervous breakdown uh, it's got you bickering and at each other uh, and trying to destroy your home uh, you need to give with your companion uh, and you need to stir up that giant killing anointing uh, you need to give with your wife uh, you need to give with your husband uh, maybe you need to get two or three of your kids uh, and you need to pray uh, you need to pray uh, you need to pray uh, until the power uh, begins to flow come on it's flowing come on I need some daddies to move in the Holy Ghost right now come on you sit there and act like it's not you if you want to but I know what God just revealed to me uh, there's some nervous breakdowns uh, that God wants to stop in this prayer meeting right now uh, there's some frustration uh, there's some fighting uh, that God wants to help right now uh, but you've got to be willing uh, to defy that which is defying you Baptism, then what? Baptism is a burial in water for accountable beings into the remission of sins, for salvation to get into Christ, to become a new creature, to get into the one body. Then, walk in the new life, study and grow, become a servant of righteousness, keep self pure, be an example, have faith in God, follow Jesus, put first things first, Resist temptation, be faithful, and be fruitful.